Hi, my name is Katherine Cooper. I'm a research scientist at the National Center for Preservation Technology and Training. Today we're in American Cemetery and I will be showing you how to take mortar samples from a masonry structure. So the reason that we take mortar samples for analysis is in order to match recipes when we end up repointing a masonry structure. It's important that the sample that we take answers the question that we're trying to answer. So, for example, in this wall we can see that there are areas of relatively significant loss. We can also see evidence of a couple of different mortars. There's this older taupe colored mortar and then there's a grayish mortar over here. So if we are going to be repointing this wall we would want to sort of say do we want to know what this mortar is over here which is a harder Portland cement mixture or do we want to know what this historic mortar is. And in order to do this I have a couple of tools that I use hammer and chisel. This is a plugging chisel that's actually specifically designed for taking out mortar. A photo scale so that when I document what I am removing from the wall we know what the scale of that material is. And then it's always important to document what we are sampling. So a sample bag and marker so that when you take it back to the lab to do the analysis yourself or if you send it away all of the documentation is present. When choosing what mortar to remove it's important to remove it from in context so I wouldn't want to just pick up a piece of mortar off the ground and to remove it without causing any damage to the brick around it it's easiest to go in and remove pieces where there is already loss or weakening. So I'm going to take the photo. In this case, this mortar is not particularly loose, though I could just break a piece out of the wall, and this is fine. In case it's a little too hard to do that, you want to use your chisel to direct the force into the mortar and not in toward the brick. Essentially pop the mortar out instead of any possible force cracking the brick. And this is actually illustrating something else to watch out for when taking a mortar sample. This mortar is very soft. It's got lime balls in it, so we're pretty sure it's going to be a lime mortar when we analyze it. But it also still has its structural integrity, so it still has binder and aggregate left in the sample. Unlike if I were to just take this powder, I don't know if there's any binder left in that material. And to analyze just a random powder, that's not going to give us an accurate recipe for a mix of binder to aggregate. Regardless of whether you take the material from the wall using a chisel or if you can just pop it out with your fingers, the ideal size for the mortar sample is about 70 to 100 grams worth of material. This doesn't mean that you need to take a weight or scale measurement in the field. A sample that's roughly two to three inches long and about half an inch deep would be sufficient. And the amount that I'm holding in my hand right now would be plenty for an acid digestion mortar analysis. So all of these samples will go in the bag. And then this can be sent to a laboratory for analysis with the photos of where the sample was taken and then also a photo of how the wall looks after you've removed the mortar from the structure. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in any of the other analytical techniques or instruments that we have at the National Center for Preservation Technology and Training, please look at our website. And if you have any questions about mortar sampling or mortar analysis, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.